God's divine nature, the outdoors, the water, the warmth of the sun. While nature can be fierce, it can also teach us to overcome, to put things in perspective. Indoors is where much of the stress is built up, but outdoors is where it is released. Today, we travel back to Southwest Florida and show you an area that maybe you haven't explored yet, the Charlotte Harbor Gulf Coast region, located north of Fort Myers and south of Sarasota. This is an area that has overcome struggle, and a visit here can maybe teach us to face our challenges by getting back to nature. This is a more secluded Florida destination, yet still has plenty of rentals, dining, lodging, and services. Due to its multiple barrier islands, it is probably one of the best areas for water recreation in the country. From parasailing on Englewood Beach, jet skiing on Minnesota Key, driving golf carts around Boca Grande, kayaking in Lemon Bay, or taking a fish charter from Englewood. The Charlotte Harbor Gulf Coast region provides plenty of opportunities for relaxation and getting back to nature. We have a chair that has your name on it. We will travel to Punta Gorda, Port Charlotte, Northport, then to the coast to Minnesota Key, Englewood Beach, Stumps Pass State Park, Lemon Bay, Don Pedro Island, Boca Grande, Gasparilla Island State Park, ending with a trip along the Peace River on Charlotte Harbor. So come with us and let that free spirit rise within your soul as we explore the Charlotte Harbor Gulf Coast region. We start our journey on the Peace River. It was Friday, August 13th, 2004. Hurricane Charlie was headed for a direct landfall on Tampa Bay, but unexpectedly, it turned inland early and went up the Peace River with winds of 150 miles per hour. While it spared the large metro of Tampa St. Pete, it was devastating for Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte. It actually carried one mobile home six miles. However, in the years after, the buildings were restored and built to hurricane-resistant building codes. Today, the Punta Gorda metro area, which includes all of Charlotte County, is ranked number three in the top 20 places in the U.S. where people are relocating. It is easy to see why. Charlotte County's natural beauty, affordable waterfront living, a less densely populated area, make this a great place to live and visit. After the hurricane, Port Charlotte and Punta Gorda begin to build up the public waterfront park system. As a result, there are newer, modern, more durable piers, marinas, boat ramps, and decks. Live Oak Point on the Port Charlotte side of the river was dedicated in 2017. It has a pedestrian promenade accent lighting and seated areas surrounded by 26 live oak trees. Also a fishing pier that extends underneath and in between the spans of the Bear and Collier Bridge. We now move to the Punta Gorda side of the bridge, the PG Waterfront Hotel and Suites, with a restaurant named after the 2004 hurricane. Hurricane Charlie's Raw Bar and Grill, the Punta Gorda River Walk and Gilchrist Park, with a large playground, basketball and tennis courts, picnic pavilions, gazebo and fishing pier. This is the location of many festivals, concerts and events throughout the year. The other side of US-41 is Lashley Park Municipal Marina. It has 85 boat slips, bait and tackle shop, Lashley's Crab House, and Harbor Scoops Ice Cream Shop. The park is pet friendly and has an interactive fountain. There is a lighted concrete fishing pier. We now begin to make our way to the beaches as we travel up US-41 to Northport. 10 miles to the northwest of Port Charlotte. The current estimated population of Port Charlotte is 61,000. 
just below that of Northport, which is over 72,000. Northport is located in Sarasota County, which we did a video of a couple of months ago. Both areas have a low population density. The cost of living in the area is lower than most coastal areas in Florida. The average home in Port Charlotte is about 181,000, and in Northport it is 202,000. Minnesota Key is an 11 mile long peninsula shared by two counties, Sarasota and Charlotte. Bordered by the Gulf of Mexico and the Intracoastal Waterway, it is great for boating. We are going to show you three great eco-friendly beaches on Minnesota Key. It has a boat ramp on one side of the road and parking on the other. The first beach we will show you is Minnesota Key Beach. This is probably one of the least crowded beaches in Sarasota County. It has paved trails, boardwalks, clean facilities, covered pavilions, an outdoor shower. The ocean here is clear blue aqua. The beach is pristine. What you don't see here is crowded multi-level condos. Just quaint beach cottages like the Seafarer Beach Resort. drive down Minnesota Key Road is nice with a canopy of trees, the Intracoastal on one side and the Gulf on the other side. Three and a half miles down the road is Blind Pass Beach Park, also known as Middle Beach, the southernmost beach in Sarasota County. The intracoastal side is a trail through a mangrove and a fishing dock. This beach also has a canoe launch, hiking trails, picnic facilities, a playground, and good for wildlife and bird watching. A nice long boardwalk to the beach. We now enter back into Charlotte County at the larger of the three beaches, Inglewood Beach. Most of the city of Inglewood is in Sarasota County, but Inglewood Beach is in Charlotte County. It is here you'll find many condos, cottages, watercraft rentals, fishing charters, and restaurants. A unique place for lodging is the Polynesian Tiki Village, the Castaway Condos. On Inglewood Beach at Chadwood Park, you can rent a kayak or jet ski with Island Jet Ski Rentals. This beachfront park has a long boardwalk with shaded picnic shelters, barbecue grills, a large playground, basketball and volleyball courts, a horseshoe pit, you can even do yoga. Shaded beach loungers. For outdoor dining, you have the Sambar Tiki and Grill or the White Elephant Pub with a boat dock on the Deepwater Harbor.
for an extended stay in this water wonderland. There are a variety of vacation rentals between Chadwick Park and Stumps Pass Beach State Park, the bungalows and luxury rentals by Beachcomber of Minnesota Key, or check out Golf Realty with Island Homes for Rent. Stumps Pass Beach State Park has a mile of pristine shoreline where seashells and shark teeth are found. It has a hiking trail where you might see gopher tortoises, snowy egret, frigate birds, covered picnic tables located along the way. You can launch kayak or paddle boards through hooked on sub paddle sports. As we head back towards the mainland at the Tom Adams Bridge is the Angler Fishing Pier. Good for catching snook, trout, ladyfish, Spanish mackerel, pompano. The Englewood Bay House is also located at the bridge. Next to the Bay House, a couple of good fishing charters, Mime 2 Fishing Charter and DJB Charters. You can also book a parasailing ride here with Englewood Parasailing. So much fun to be had in Englewood Beach. We now start to head south towards Boca Grande. Next to Lemon Bay High School are a couple of environmental parks. First Cedar Point, where you can see a butterfly garden. There is a playground, trails through a nature preserve. On the opposite side of the road is the Oyster Creek Environmental Park, where there are more trails, a canoe launch area. A mile to the southeast is Ann and Chuck Dever Regional Park, a dog-friendly recreational park with athletic fields, a skate park, basketball and tennis courts, a large playground, and trails through mangrove forests. Are you starting to see why people like living here? Lemon Bay is one of five aquatic preserves in Charlotte County. The Stumps Pass Marina has boat storage, bait and gift shop, marine service, and waterfront dining at the Lighthouse Grill. Three miles down the Intracoastal is the Cape Hayes Marina where you can rent pontoon boats for $300 for a full day or $225 for four hours. Across the Intracoastal is Don Pedro Island. There is no access by road, so you have to take a ferry to get to the island. We now head out on the Boca Grande Causeway. Off in the distance, you see Little Gasparilla Island. It is $6 to drive the causeway. The causeway is 2.5 miles long and crosses Gasparilla Sound and consists of three bridges. To the left is Old Charlotte and Northern Railway, which was discontinued shortly after the causeway opened in 1958. To the right is Bird Key. This is where the boats and the jet skis really have some fun. If you are looking for old Florida, maybe outside of St. Augustine, Boca Grande is the place. The name is Spanish for Big Mouth. It is a little quaint beach town. The Boca Grande Bike Trail, a 6.5 miles long asphalt path. There are no gas stations on Boca Grande with the exception of the street pump at the marina. So most of its residents use golf carts as their primary mode of transportation.
The Boca Grande Pass is considered one of the world's best tarpon fishing spots. There are two lighthouses on Boca Grande. The first, the Gasparilla Island Lighthouse, originally built in Delaware in 1888, but later moved to Gasparilla Island where it opened in 1927. You can climb to the top when it is open. The Boca Bay Pass Club often hosts weddings and private events. Gasparilla Island State Park is $3 to enter and provides swimming, snorkeling, shelling, hiking, fishing, and nature study. Pets are allowed in the park, but not on the beach or at the lighthouse. The centerpiece of the park is the oldest structure on the island, the Port Boca Grande Lighthouse. The house dwelling lighthouse is home to a museum and a nature room where you can touch bones, fossils, and shells. Also on the grounds are barbecue grills, a pavilion with picnic tables. Across the Boca Grande Pass is La Costa Island, and beyond that, Captiva Island, which we filmed in our Fort Myers video two months ago. On the east side of the island is the Gasparilla Golf Club. Just a couple more locations to show you as we head back to the mainland, towards Port Charlotte Beach Park. We cross the Mayaka River at El Jobin Bridge as the sun begins to set on Southwest Florida. The Charlotte Sports Park, home of the Charlotte Stone Crabs and the spring home of the Tampa Bay Rays. The Port Charlotte Beach Park is located on Alligator Bay, just off the Peace River. There is a boat ramp. There are picnic pavilions, barbecue grills, a 6,000 square foot recreation center with a large kitchen can be rented out for events, boardwalk, horseshoe courts, a heated swimming pool, bocce ball courts, playground tennis, basketball, and volleyball courts, a fishing pier, and kayak rentals available. The various waterways here provide a great area for kayaking. Two and a half miles away on the Peace River is the Charlotte Harbor Yacht Club. Bayshore Live Oak Park is the focal point of the Charlotte Harbor Historic District. This is a dog-friendly linear park, has a new playground, canoe and kayak launch, picnic pavilions, one with a fireplace, pedestrian promenades, fishing piers, A sign of Port Charlotte's growth can be seen with this new massive 420 million 22 acre Sunseeker Resort being built. However, there has been a halt in construction. It is owned by Allegiant Air, who has been financially hurt by the travel shutdown from COVID-19, so has delayed funding for the project for 18 months. When completed, this will be the tallest building in Charlotte County with three nine-story towers. The Charlotte Harbor Gulf Coast region has come a long way since Charlie, and there is no doubt that it will continue to grow as one of the best areas in the country to visit, to live, to enjoy life to the full, taking advantage of all the beautiful nature in the region. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We shoot travel promos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Coming up next, we head to the west coast of Michigan and explore the shores of Holland and Grand Haven. Subscribe to our channel to see more. Thank you for watching and blessings to you wherever you may be.